You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, uh, my name is Balakam Lakran. I'm the chairman of uh, Iceland Cricket Association. And uh, I've, been, uh, I've been in Iceland for over 18 years. I moved uh, from the US, uh, but I'm originally from India. So cricket was uh, part of my uh, youth and childhood growing up. And uh, when Iceland, uh, I realized Icelanders, some of the Icelanders were playing cricket, I was very excited and started playing. Um, and I also listened to the Dibbly Dobbly podcast. I've seen a number of uh, small associate nations uh, building the sport, which is very exciting. Uh, I think growing the game is uh, real motivation. And for Iceland cricket, our big vision is that by 2030, we should have a competitive team competing at the global stage. Uh, given that cricket is now an Olympic sport, uh, Iceland has won Olympic gold medals and uh, silver medals. So we are, we are excited about uh, you know, starting something from scratch and building it uh, as part of uh, the fabric in Iceland. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly podcast. And on the podcast, we have started a new series on the podcast, looking at associate nations within cricket and how they are developing the game in their country. And many of us cricket fans know so much about the established cricketing countries and not enough on the associate nations who play cricket. So it would be nice to learn more about those associate countries and via the podcast, people can learn more as well. For today's Associate Cricket Series episode, we are discussing all things Iceland cricket and joining me to discuss and talk all things Iceland cricket is the chairman of Iceland cricket, Bala Kamala Karan. Bala, welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here, Bala. And um, I think everyone listening to this episode uh, will be very curious about uh, Iceland and its association with cricket. But I suppose that's why we started this series on the podcast, looking at associate nations, uh, so people can learn more and uh, find out what's going on in terms of cricket in these particular countries. And um, obviously, uh, as we'll talk about in our chat, Bala, that uh, Iceland cricket is in the process of becoming an associate member. They're not quite an associate member yet of the ICC, that's, but they're striving to, right. to, to be a member, hopefully in the next few years. So you'll definitely talk us through about that process and how that's looking. But uh, I'm sure everyone listening and watching will be eager and wanting to, to learn more after listening and watching this episode about Iceland cricket and probably going over to Iceland uh, to see a game of cricket being played in quite a unique country, which is quite splendid in scenery and views, and a lot of people travel over there. So it's, it's got a good association with the game of cricket. So no doubt, as we get into our chat today, you'll, you'll tell us more about the wonderful things with cricket in Iceland and, and that partnership. But um, before we do that, uh, Bala, as I do of all my guests that I've interviewed on the podcast, I like to take them back to when they first got into cricket. And mm -hmm. it's been very fascinating listening to people's memories on how they started to get into cricket. So, Bala, let's go back to the very beginning growing up. I know that's a long time ago. <laughs> time <laughs> um, well, I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, what were your earliest memories of watching, playing, and even going to the cricket? And who were right. some of your cricketing idols that you looked up to growing up? Right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for that introduction. Um, so uh, I was uh, born in Chennai. And, uh, or at least when I was born, it was called Madras. And um, I grew up uh, playing cricket in my, you know, gully cricket by, by my home. Uh, cricket was part of uh, a lot of the things that I did when I was, uh, I don't know, eight to 15, I would say. Um, my school was, um, I mean, it's actually a funny story. Because I, I used to play gully cricket and my physical, uh, you know, teacher, the PT trainer said that uh, they've gotten requests from the Tamil Nadu Cricket Association to send some players for some selection to be representing the state or something like that for the under 12. 
and he picked like four of us and sent us to this uh, Tamil Nadu cricket club. And from playing gully cricket, suddenly, you know, I was like, uh, you know, uh, going and playing with cricket, real cricket balls and, you know, pads and all that stuff. Um, you know, I got selected and uh, represented the Tamil Nadu state uh, when I was under 12. So that was kind of like the biggest fascination. The the real uh, big motivation was that, you know, I, I, I actually got exemption to go and train cricket and not go to school, which was actually a very big motivation. Not not sit in the classroom, but I could go and play. And if you if you give that option to a 10, 11 year old kid, they always want to take that. And I did. And that's how, uh, you know, my cricketing journey started. Um, I got pretty serious uh, playing sport. I really fell in love with the sport. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I represented the state in the under 12 and the under 15 levels. And I, I started playing our fourth division league uh, as well. And um, the, the reason that I stopped playing cricket in a very, you know, professional setting or more serious session, uh, I'll have to uh, really uh, attribute that to Sachin Tendulkar uh, because he's the same age group as I was and he was uh, representing uh, Mumbai and the West Zone of India. And he came to Chennai for um, a zone match. Uh, West Zone was a South Zone match. And my um, coach, uh, I used to be a fast bowler. I used to open the bowling. And so uh, my big uh, idol was Kapil Dave. You know, I wanted to be a fast bowler and a mid order bat. You know, that's what I did at the beginning. I was an all-rounder. And um, I... I um, my coach asked me to bowl for Sachin Tendulkar, and I was like, you know, who is this guy? You know, what what's the big deal about him? And um, I went and uh, bowled for him in the nets, and he hit me all over the ground. I realized very quickly that this guy was going to play for India and not me, really. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I more or less, uh, you know, hung up my boots, as they say, and uh, focused on what I could do. Uh, to build a career and and all that uh, other things that comes with it. Um, so so that's kind of like the early memories of cricket. But it was uh, very fun times. A lot of a uh, lot of the kids I played with uh, went on to represent India. Um, uh, yeah, lots of them being uh, like uh, Hemang Badani and uh, you know. Um, actually, now one of the ICC empires, uh, Madhana Gopal, was also somebody who played with me. He is, uh, you know, he's uh, constant in IPL and number of international games as well. So, so, so a lot of the people who played with me actually went on to uh, build their careers and what they do now in cricket, which is, you know, quite uh, interesting for me. And obviously, I kind of turned a corner uh, when I came to Iceland, I moved to Iceland in 2006. Uh, my wife is Icelandic. Uh, we met in the U.S. And, uh, you know, I kind of dropped off the cricketing bandwagon. I actually didn't even watch cricket uh, because I moved to the U.S. Uh, in the year 1996. You know, I worked on my career. I became a management consultant. Uh, when I was in the U.S., I played very little cricket. Or actually, I played no cricket at all. And... Um, but I got a chance encounter with uh, one of the CEOs of a bank in Iceland and he wanted to join his team. So I took the job. So we moved to Iceland in 2006. And when I came here, uh, right by my mother-in-law's house, there's like a big, uh, big lawn, beautiful lawn. And one day I saw some people play cricket. I was like, what? That's strange. <laughs> And uh, and I kind of, you know, just reached out to these people and uh, I realized that uh, one of the persons playing was part of the British Embassy and uh, he was in my Rotary Club as well and I joined the Rotary Club and, and, and he was like, hey, Bala, you should come and play cricket and, you know, he started uh, chatting and then and, and that's how I started playing cricket. It was like a handful of us, really. 
and uh, the British Embassy had funded, uh, you know, all kinds of cricketing gear and stuff, which uh, allowed us to, you know, play cricket. And uh, that was 2007, 2008. Uh, but I also realized some of the Icelanders, the native Icelanders, had actually uh, played cricket even before that, right? So, uh, and then we actually have a book that has actually just got published from 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 Lords to the Fjords. And if anybody wants to really uh, read the history of Iceland cricket, that's a good place to start. And we we think that you know that's just the early beginnings. You know, we we have a long way to go, so we have uh, lots of stories to tell. Uh, so far, um, you know, from then. Uh, I kind of dropped off. I was focusing on uh, what I do, which is I invest in startups. I'm an investor in early stage companies. I run a fund. Uh, I founded Startup Iceland, and this was during the financial collapse in Iceland. I kind of literally uh, helped build the startup ecosystem here. And uh, so I hadn't, I hadn't paid much attention to cricket. Uh, there was a, some some of the... Other cricketers who are here in Iceland uh, wanted to take it further. So officially, the Iceland Cricket Association was formed in, in 2014, 2015. And, um, you know, slowly the numbers grew. And uh, 2019 is when uh, one of the players reached out to me and said, hey, you should come and see what we're doing. And uh, and I went and I was quite, I was quite impressed, you know, as, uh, you know, there was a whole bunch of people playing, and some of them were playing actually very good cricket. I was uh, I was uh, pleasantly surprised, and I said maybe I should uh, dust my boots and get back into the game, and I did. You know, twenty twenty, I started playing again for one of the clubs, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And once I started playing, you know, all the members uh, were reaching out and saying maybe. I should play a role in organizing uh, cricket in Iceland. So I, I uh, stood for the role of chairman. I was elected chairman in 2020. And uh, since then, we've done a whole bunch of things. And I'm, I'm happy to talk about them <laughs> if you if you want to lead me. But uh, we, we did the first uh, auctioning. We uh, reorganized uh, how the clubs are administered. So each club has its own board. Each club takes care of their own funding. Uh, the cricketing board more or less helps and organizes tournaments and ensures that we play by rules and make sure umpires are there and you know, kind of the, the, the governance side of it. But the, each club takes care of uh, building the club building the players uh, competing and, uh, you know, complying with the, the code of conduct. Um, so, so all that got done in the first uh, two years. And then, uh, you know, now um, uh, we grew from three clubs to four clubs. And then uh, last year we grew from four to five clubs. So the number of players has reached over 140 now. And uh, this year we will be launching uh, women and youth cricket as well. So it is a it is a growth story, and you know, at the early days, it's it, it always uh, looks messy and <laughs> disorganized. But uh, we strive every day to you know make progress and 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 do things properly, and uh, you know enjoy the sport and bring people in and be more open and inviting rather than uh, closed. And all that, all those things are good principles, I think. And we have eleven countries represented in Iceland, really, because uh, I'm from India. Uh, there are players from Sri Lanka, from Australia, from England, from South Africa, from the Caribbean islands, uh, from Pakistan, from Afghanistan, and even from Hong Kong. So, so Iceland is kind of like a melting pot of uh, a number of countries, even for a small country like Iceland. Uh, there is uh, quite a few people from different parts who, who make made Iceland their home. Yes, de definitely. Um, a lot of good good stuff going on there, a lot of good work. And, and thank you for sharing your memories into the game of, of cricket, Bala, and, uh, you know, how you got into sport and, your relationship with Iceland and getting involved with Icelandic cricket there, as we'll talk about more and more as this chat progresses. I can mm -hmm. see why you 
retired after bowling to such a deal do cricket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, that's it. It was it was a very very yeah, that was a very rude awakening to uh for a for a fourteen year old kid to to be shown, you know, where where I stood in the I don't know, the totem pole of uh, talent. And 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 I know I feel good about it because it was such in Tendulkar, it was not somebody else. So, you know, obviously he went on to become uh, a legend and and uh, such a great ambassador for the sport. And I, I think, you know, uh, I think we are very fortunate to have uh, such a talented player uh, in our lifetime, actually. Yes, that's because people ended. don't realize, you know, I, I always say this, you know, obviously cricket is, uh, cricket is, um, I, 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 I try to tell Icelanders that cricket is like chess and football put together mm. because it is a lot of strategy and it is also a lot of physical uh, effort. People don't realize how physically demanding cricket is. You know, I, I always say, you know, it, it, it feels like we are not doing anything, but until you come and actually do the work of actually uh, bowling a ball or hitting a ball, you don't realize uh, how much uh, talent and skill and effort goes into doing that well. Yes, that's that's right. I, I couldn't agree more, especially batting, you know, picking yeah. up line and length so quickly in Sachin Tendulkar did that. Steve yeah, Smith, I mean, um, all 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 of the greats, right? All of the greats, mm -hmm. you know, they make make this game look so easy uh, until people pick up the bat and they try to do what these others do. Then they realize how difficult this is. <laughs> mm. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It is very difficult. Um, but yeah, there's there's um, you know the greats of our game. They make it so look so easy with with bat and ball, and especially in the field. But for someone who's a novice and coming into the game yeah. for the first time, yeah, uh, it can and be. And of course, you know, you also don't want to make it that it's not accessible, um, because the 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 trick in all of this is that obviously it's accessible. I think anybody can play the game, but if you want to play the game at a real good level and you really want to compete. Obviously, you have to put in all the effort, right? It takes a, years of practice. It takes uh, dedication, discipline. And obviously, you also have to take care of your body. I mean, you cannot uh, not uh, be physically fit and, uh, you know, come into the game because you're not going to survive. And it also given me a little bit of more energy because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 50 years old. Uh, but you know, I, I I stand my own ground, and I actually play. I still play, and and um, I uh, I try to uh, you know compete with uh, with the younger 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 kids, which is uh, which is great. Yes, yes. Uh, no, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can play this game at any age, really. It doesn't really matter. You can you can still play you know? any form of cricket at any sort mm -hmm. of age. Um, as we see throughout the whole world. But, um, yes, thank you, Bala, for, for sharing your uh, cricket journey with us. It was very intriguing and very fascinating. And not many people could say that I bowled a Sachin Tendulkar or experienced those types of players emerging from the Indian setup that right. one played for <laughs> India. So you were very lucky in that regard. So I don't think anyone I, I, yeah. else can trust that. Right. I mean, I've, I've met, uh, I, I met, uh, obviously, not just Sachin Tendulkar, Muhammad Azruddin and uh, Sunil Gavaskar uh, when I was uh, still a kid, uh, while they were, you know, starting to become uh, players for India. And I don't think people realize or recognize how big of a thing cricket is in India. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, meeting, uh, you know, celebrities mm. <laughs> and, uh, it really made a very big uh, influence in me when I was a kid to uh, meet these people and, 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 you know, and, and I, you know, and, and then the love for the sport became forever, right? You don't, you don't lose those things. You just get stuck with it. 
And that's what, you know, um, I'm very excited about now because uh, I, I didn't let go of some of those dreams and I'm trying to bring them all back through here in Iceland. And, and, and we want to kind of create those memories for kids here who can, uh, you know, go on to play the sport because it is, it is, uh, it's quite exhilarating when you're on the ground and, and playing and, and it's, it's a lot of fun too. Yes, I couldn't agree more. It is a lot of fun. It's a great game, cricket, and uh, it's a mm. wonderful sport and uh, shared by many people around the world, especially in the associate world. As I mm -hmm. found out in this, uh, in this series, we have a lot of people doing their best to promote and grow the sport in their various countries and, and no mm -hmm. different with you in Iceland. So, right. yeah, I couldn't agree more there. But once again, thank you for, for sharing mm. your cricket journey with us, Bala. Um Bala, I thought to start this interview on Iceland cricket, let's talk about the history of cricket in Iceland. You can learn a lot about cricket from its history, and the cricket, the history of cricket in Iceland, I should say, is quite interesting. So, Bala, give us a brief overview on the history of cricket in Iceland, a brief history lesson for all of us. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, we, um, we actually have a book that was published uh, earlier this year called uh, From Lords to the Fjords, which uh, kind of uh, captures in timeline the history of cricket in Iceland. And, um, you know, we, um, we still believe that cricket actually originated in Iceland because we have captured that in the sagas, which was written in the year 900, or, or based on events in the year 900, where there is a reference to us for a game that was played with a bat and a ball. Um, so, so we say that we, we were the true inventors of cricket and, uh, and, and, uh, and the English uh, stole it like uh, in most, uh, most things in, in the world, <laughs> you know, only, only, uh, you know, as, as a, as a stab at uh, English cricket. Uh, but, uh, but that was history really going back uh, 1,200 years. But the recent history uh, is a um, couple of Icelanders were in, you know, Iceland and England have a very strong, you know, it's, it's a three-hour flight. So a lot of Icelanders uh, go to England for education, business. Uh, a lot of fish was sold to England as well, still is being sold to England from Iceland. That was the big uh, commerce. Uh, and, and for those of you who don't know Cod Wars, you should uh, check that out. So England and Iceland have a very uh, interesting history. And uh, two Icelanders were in a bar and they, they were watching a game of cricket and they just got intrigued and they said, why, why don't we play this sport in Iceland? And, and uh, sure enough, uh, one of them, uh, uh, went uh, to the extent of uh, you know getting a bunch of people assembled in in Iceland and uh, that was Ragnar Christensen. He's he's still he's an honorary board member. He's an honorary member of the Iceland cricket because he was kind of like the founding member of Iceland cricket. And uh, the others were just you know curious and they thought that this guy had gone crazy to try <laughs> to build a sport in Iceland. All that is very humorously captured in the book. So for your readers and listeners, uh, this might be a good way to go uh, get that book. Um, so so that's how it started. And, uh, you know, like everything else, you know, we underestimate three years and or uh, we kind of overestimate three years and underestimate 10 years. So uh, and then Iceland became a lot more open. Uh, lots more people started coming here, like myself. Uh, lots of uh, people who played cricket as kids uh, made Iceland their home. And we kind of formed uh, the first uh, association in the year 2015. We started forming league games and uh, started uh, hosting clubs and teams who wanted to come and play here. We started doing that even before that, you know, in 2007, 2008, we used to have clubs coming to Iceland, visiting and playing us. And uh, nothing competitive, but it was, uh, it was always fun. Uh, but now it has become quite competitive. Uh, as I said, we have over five clubs and over 140 players. So we have about 10 
uh, men's team. So each club has an A and B team. And uh, so the A teams usually compete and we kind of rotate the players. And we started engaging with the ICC to become an affiliate member. And what are the requirements? I think we more or less satisfy 80 to 90% of the requirements. The last 10% is the hardest and uh, and it's a moving goalpost uh, because when we first started engaging with them, they said you needed to have eight men's team and we kind of fulfilled that criteria. And then when we spoke to them last, they said, oh, you need to have eight women's team and also eight youth team. <laughs> and we we basically were like, hey, we, none of the other associate members had to pass through any of these criteria. Why are we the only ones who have to go through them? But then again, you know, uh, we we understand why they want to do that. But uh, but at the end of the day, it forces us to you know kind of fast forward a lot of our plans. So we're doing that, and uh, and you know that's kind of like the history to the present of Iceland cricket. I mean, we we as I said, we conduct uh, four different uh, leagues. We play indoor during the winter months. So we actually have an indoor tournament uh, starting in the first quarter of every year. And then as uh, summer begins, we have our uh, 60 ball shootout, which is a T10 tournament as a prep for our uh, Iceland Premier League or Eastland Club Premier League, which is starting this Sunday actually. And uh, we, uh, we host uh, those games and uh you know it's uh, it's quite competitive these days and uh it gets uh, pretty uh, pretty intense but uh, it's all it's all good fun yes definitely a- absolutely um no doubt it is all good fun and everyone having a good time uh but uh, thank you bala for sharing our a brief history lesson on the the history of icelandic <laughs> cricket and how cricket became a, a a thing in Iceland, really, and I suppose all associate countries have a similar story with the game of cricket. Um, either the British, uh, uh, you know, um, introduced the sport into that particular country, or someone, as you said, watched watched the game in a particular setting, mm-hmm. or got got an idea of, hey, you know, that's not a bad thing to try and do. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's mm-hmm. try that. Let's give it a let's give it a go. What? How hard can it be, as they say? So, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and all these years later, you've, uh, you know, you've developed into, uh, you know, what what you you are doing in the in the current day. So, um, thank you for sharing that brief history lesson there uh, with us, Bala, on the history of Icelandic cricket, and, and no doubt more people would uh, do some more research of their own after listening to this um, episode today. I would, I would encourage them to go buy the book if they're really interested in ice and cricket. The book kind of uh, very nicely outlines uh, the the start, the beginning, and where we are today. Um, and, and it's a, it's a fun book. It's a it's a great way to uh, you know gift somebody who is very interested in cricket. Probably we are the northernmost uh, cricket playing nation in the world. I think. Yes. Well, I think so. Yes. And we also uh, we have the northernmost think... ground. We have the northernmost uh, cricket ground in the world. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that's the claim to fame uh, for Iceland cricket, that's for sure. Uh, the most northern uh, country in the world that plays cricket. And um, sadly, you know, I don't think of any other contenders for that for that spot. So um, I'm pretty sure that record's sake of ice then, that's for sure. <laughs> um, Bala, let's um, talk about the Iceland national cricket teams, the women's and men's mm-hmm. teams. Uh, be good to gain your insights on the two teams and learn more about their achievements, the players' stories, mm-hmm. because many of the players come from diverse backgrounds. And yeah. uh, obviously, as we mentioned at the top of this episode, that uh, – they haven't played any official international matches as yet because, as we've mentioned, because Iceland's not an, an associate member as yet, but working yes. towards that. So, right. Bala, for those who may not know a lot about uh, the Iceland women's and men's teams, can you tell us more about them, uh, the players, and some of their stories? 
Right. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, the men's team uh, is the only one that is uh, actually competed against other national teams. We've gone and played tournaments uh, in uh, in Prague, in Czech Republic, and even in England. Uh, these are mostly other associate or non-associate members or aspiring associate members, as I should say, like we are. Uh, we uh, beat the Swiss uh, quite uh, convincingly when we played them. And it is all well documented in our Twitter feeds, so I don't have to repeat that story. Uh, last year, we actually went to uh, Estonia and we played against uh, Estonia in a bilateral series. It was actually supposed to be a tournament, uh, a, a four country tournament uh, to kind of bring the non-associate members together. Estonia had just become an associate member and uh, we, we lost uh, <laughs> uh, the, tri the, the, the three matches we played there, but uh, it was a great learning experience for us uh, as a you know, new team that is emerging. Um, our players come from various different countries. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, we have 11 countries represented, starting with our coach, uh, Nolan Williams, who actually moved from the Caribbean islands to the UK to play cricket. Uh, he, uh, he actually played for English County and uh, he, he used to be a fast bowler. Uh, he still plays uh, with us in, in my club. Not as uh, at, at the same level, but he's uh, he's a fantastic coach and a fantastic uh, lover of the game. And uh, our national captain is Lakmal Bandara, who is actually from uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, and Lakmal is a baker. Uh, Nolan is a you know a compliance and security officer. Uh, he used to work uh, at Goldman Sachs and then he used to work for an Icelandic bank. And now he works for Alvatech, which is one of the first corporate sponsors of Iceland cricket. Um, I mean, they're not yet officially sponsors of Iceland cricket. They sponsor one of the clubs uh, where most of the players in that club comes from that company. So uh, they, they kind of use cricket as a way to, you know, uh, bring their company teams together. And uh, a sport can be such a, you know, inspiring thing for corporates. So we've been uh, focusing on trying to get corporates to engage with building the sport in Iceland. And, and that is an ongoing effort and we'll continue to do that. And, uh, you know, we have uh, two, um, two of our best players, uh, Derek Dionar Island. He's actually from uh, the Caribbean islands and uh, Dushan Bandara, both of them are, um, uh, Dushan is an all-rounder, he's a left-hand fast bowler and a left-hand bat, and Derek is a left-hand bat. Uh, Derek is actually the highest run scorer for Iceland, and uh, I mean, I don't know the numbers from the top of my head, <laughs> I'm sure you can, uh, people can look them up, uh, it is uh, in, our, in, our, in our website. Um, but Derek is a fantastic player. I think that Derek and Dushan can actually play uh, in, you know, any of the competitive uh, platforms today. Uh, in addition to that, you know, we have a number of young players. Uh, Sebastian, he's from uh, South Africa. He's uh, a wicketkeeper and, uh, and an explosive bat. Uh, when, when, when Seba gets going, he's like, uh, Quinton de Kock, you cannot stop him. He just, uh, you know, slaughters the bowling. Um, so we have, we have some very, you know, interesting players. And of course, you know, I cannot leave out David Cook. Uh, David Cook is a left arm orthodox spinner. And David Cook is uh, the highest wicket taker, uh, last season for, uh, Iceland in our, in our domestic tournaments. Uh, David is also the secretary of our club and he's also the one who handles our Twitter account, our mm -hmm. X uh, as we call it now. Uh, David is a uh, brilliant, uh, uh, I, I say David is a cricket genius um, and we are fortunate to have somebody like him, you know, uh, help uh, build uh, our social media fans and uh, he engages with them in a very funny and 
you know, in his own unique way. And, and us also, you know, the Twitter or the X handle that you see is basically David's persona. Uh, David is, uh, is a professor in the University of Iceland. He teaches environmental economics. Uh, he's a professor, you know, he did his doctorate in economics and uh, he plays cricket and he is, uh, uh, as, as I say, I, I, I cannot uh, stop praising David for his wit and humor. You know, he's just uh, brilliant and he gets, uh, he gets how uh, the social media platforms need to be used to build a brand, build awareness, and uh, engage with your fans and uh, followers. Uh, so, so David uh, is also part of the national team, and uh, you know we have a pretty good uh, uh, team. Uh, we think you know on a on a good day we can compete with any team, uh, and and that's pretty exciting. Uh, but we are in the build up phase, right? You know we have a number of new players who are coming in. Uh, joining the clubs and uh, the way that they get into the national team is that they have to perform in the local tournaments and then based on which you know we 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 select them to represent Iceland and we usually went and toured uh, outside of Iceland uh, but again you know uh, all of that is dependent on sponsors budget all those different things so we're still working on a number of that we don't have a touring this season uh, but the touring clubs that come to Iceland, we make them play against each of the local clubs. Uh, we used to allow them to play against the national team, but it was quite one-sided because uh, we would just beat them. You know, any club that comes, we would just, you know, trash them. <laughs> so it was uh, not fair for those who are coming. And we don't, we're not very good hosts if you if you kind of put them on a field and trash them, you know. <laughs> So, so we we let the the local clubs play with them, which makes it a little bit even keel. Um, for the women's side, uh, the first uh, step that we are taking is that uh, we have uh, Alexandra Leeper, who has joined our board as our diversity and uh, women cricket development officer. Uh, she is actually uh, building a squad. And uh, we will be uh, announcing, I mean, you know, to be fair, you know, there's no history of women cricket in Iceland. So we need to start from somewhere. So we're starting with uh, people who have played cricket, just like how the men started. But we're focusing mainly on fitness and, uh, you know, getting, getting the body to be ready for cricket. Because a lot of the, I mean, Iceland is a very fit nation. Uh, Icelanders love sports. Uh, they are very active and, uh, and Icelandic women are extremely, and, and, and all you need to do is, uh, you know, check out CrossFit, you know, and, uh, um, I think more Icelandic women have won CrossFit than any other country. So, so we are very excited about launching this, uh, this aspect of cricket in Iceland, because I think we will have a we'll have a better women's team than the men's team at the international level, given uh, our history of uh, women's sports performance. And uh, so, so we are, we are very uh, excited about uh, that uh, launch this year. And uh, with the youth cricket, we have three schools that uh, are uh, signed up to have coaching uh, in cricket again, starting this year which we will be starting to do as the summer uh, starts. And uh, summers in Iceland are very fluid. <laughs> you, you never know when, when it will be summer. But uh, June, July, August are kind of like the big uh, summer months. So uh, the idea would be to uh, get more into all these things as, as, uh, as we progress through the season. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Obviously, it's a, it's a long slow process but uh, it's going to take time and and hopefully um you know the fruits of your labor will be rewarded um yeah. in terms yeah uh, in terms of the process uh, that you're undertaking at the moment to become a an associate mm -hmm. member just tell those who are listening and watching uh what does that sort of process entail in terms of requirements and what the icc 
demands of you right. to obtain associate right. status? I think the big requirements are, uh, you know, we need to have uh, enough uh, men's team, that is eight uh, men's team. Uh, and, and the other requirements are we need to have eight women's team and uh, we need to conduct local tournaments for all categories and also youth programs, that is uh, eight women uh, youth teams. Um, I mean, building um, eight women's team, eight youth team is going to take time, but uh, we think that we can get there. You know, I think it is not, uh, it's not an impossible requirement, but it is a pretty hard requirement because none of the other associate members who are part of ICC had to go through the same criteria uh, as us. Um, and, and of course, there are other requirements related to infrastructure and uh, governance and all of that. We qualify most of those other things. It's mostly the, the number of uh, women and youth program that is a gating factor for us. But, you know, as I've told uh, our board and our members, you know, um, the more difficult it is, you know, better we'll cherish doing this <laughs> because, uh if it was easy, you know, everybody would do it. Uh, I think uh, the struggle is part of the journey. And I think we're happy to, you know, work hard and, and get these things uh, out of the ground. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Absolutely. I suppose it embodies your spirit, I suppose. And that reflects the way you play your cricket. Tough yep. fighters, not giving up underdogs. Yep. We love we love the underdog uh, story. Yeah, we love uh, we love being the underdogs because you know uh, people don't have expectations, and we can come and you know uh, squash that. <laughs> you know, uh, with our effort, with uh, hard work and discipline, and I think that's uh, that gives uh, hope and inspiration for everybody else. So that's always a good story, right? At the end of the day. We all want to be inspired. We all want to uh, aspire to do great things. And I think uh, this kind of creates a platform to enable anybody to do that. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, in terms of experience, because, uh, you know, both teams, once uh, the women's team is fully established and, and obviously the men's team as well, in terms of, you know, playing against other countries on a regular basis rather than scattered as it is now, are you sure that you're able to facilitate that uh, in terms of yeah. going forward that we're going to get more games, probably the yeah. European cricket network that's happening in Europe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, we are part of all the European associate and non-associate member groups. So we are, we have good relationship with them. We have a number of well-wishers advisors and uh, people who want to build the sport who, who engage with us. I mean, for us, you know, the two big uh, kind of milestones to achieve are one, uh, we need to get uh, cricket as a formalized federation within Iceland. And, and we are working to qualify to do that. And I think we will do that uh, by next year. And uh, the next one is to be recognized by the ICC, because once you get recognized by the ICC, then you are required to play uh, qualification games for the ICC tournaments. So, so we'll get the chance to, you know, play all those uh, other nations. But we, you know, we have our, uh, you know, brethren in Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Norway. Uh, Iceland is a very close-knit Scandinavian country, so we engage with them on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, they're obviously they have a pretty tight calendar of games and they're always happy to, uh, you know, engage with us. So, so the next step for us is to move from running these domestic leagues to start running national league tournaments. And, you know, all those things are you know, in the cards, it is uh, it is our next uh, six to eight year roadmap. Uh, because in order to become a competitive team by 2030, we have to uh, start working backwards from there. And uh, we toured last year uh, to Estonia, so uh, we'll we'll continue to rebuild and uh, start playing the other nations uh, starting next year, hopefully. Yes, uh, absolutely. I have spoken to people in Estonia. Finland and Norway, 
and they did mention Iceland in, in our chats and playing against <laughs> you guys and sure. the relationship with the other Nordic countries as well. Yes. Um, to try and get that up and running and i mean for us you know what we really think is that we can pull each other up and i think that is mm. a very uh positive way to think about building the sport yes absolutely um do you think once you become an associate member do you think the national teams once uh, that status is given do you think they'll they'll uh, cope with the level of playing international cricket do you think they'll hit the ground running pretty well well i mean you know I, I always say you know it's it's hard to predict and especially the future right mm. <laughs> uh nobody knows really um i mean if anything i would say you know look at iceland's performance in football in the euro and in the world cups you know uh, iceland beat england in football uh, you know so we have beaten some of the really strong uh, football teams. And if that can be projected to cricket, I think on any given day, we can stand our own in, in, in the sport of cricket. I think that's what's so uh, inspiring about sports. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how big your country is. It doesn't matter how much money was invested in building the sport. All that matters is the leaven on the field, you know, and also the leaven on that field on that day. So there are pretty much no, uh, you know, advantages other than the effort and what uh, people put on the ground. And I can say the, the Icelandic mindset is very tough. You know, because you have to be that way to live in this place. You know, it's not an easy place to live. And more importantly, all the people who played cricket, like myself, when we were kids, uh, we had to, uh, you know, go through other big barriers to be here. And I think that actually gives us strength to compete uh, kind of with no holds barred. You know, there's, 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 there's nothing that can stop the people from uh, Iceland to give their all. You know, I think that's, that's, that's inspiring. That's fun to uh, watch. And I think it'll be a great story. And I think fans enjoy that. And I think that's what we, we want to bring out every time we go out and play. We want to give it all. You know, we don't want to hold anything back. And we'll go and fight as hard as anybody else. And I think that's, that's good for sport, right? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, absolutely. And we've seen that in cricket over the years, the Cinderella stories. Um, yeah, one that comes I mean, to mind. you know, the last World Cup, yeah, the yeah. last World Cup, you know, Afghanistan, Ireland, Afghanistan. And, and, and Netherlands, you know, all of them, you know, surprised everybody in terms of what they could do on the field. And, uh, and I think, uh, and I think uh, that holds true for Iceland and other associate nations i say that you know you cannot take any country for granted anymore you know today with the access to information and by the way we get a lot of requests from coaches and umpires and uh, players reaching out to us every day wanting to come to iceland and play for us and help us build the sport so we are very uh, fortunate that way that uh, a lot of people want to see us succeed which gives us inspiration as well. So we're we're very you know in a in a very blessed place. Definitely, yeah, absolutely, and just shows that everyone wants to including keep, you know, including yourselves reaching out to us to talk about you know what we're doing in this uh, you know small corner of the world. <laughs> well, yes, well, uh, yeah, well, that's why I started the series because associate cricket doesn't really get covered all that much. Right. Um, it's, it's mainly you know, full members, nations, coverage, and you have some podcasts that do associate cricket or some people talk about it or people write about it, but there's not enough coverage on it. So that's why I started the right. series in December Thanks of last year. Thank you for doing year. that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Oh, I mean, that's, it's, uh, that's, that's great. It's very kind of you, Bella. It's, it's very kind of you. I, I, um, you know, I 
do it because I love the game and, you know, I want to hear these fantastic stories from yourself and other people uh, who are generally passionate and enthusiastic about growing the game in these countries, despite mm. what people have these misconceptions or perceptions on certain things, is that right. cricket's meant to be an inclusive sport and mm -hmm. everyone should play cricket no matter where you're yeah. from or, yeah. you know, if you know, if you have any physical ailments or anything yeah. uh, like that, you, you know, everyone has the right to play cricket and feel welcomed in, in this mm -hmm. game. And I mean, it, it, is a, it is a sport, right? It is a hmm. sport. I mean, the sports is, you know, it's a human creation. I think we should allow any human who wants to play the sport to play the sport. I don't think there's any criteria. I think, uh, as I said, end of the day, all that matters is what they bring on that day to the field. And if you bring your uh, whole self and you commit and give your whole self to the sport, you will enjoy it. And everybody around you will enjoy it too. Yes, it, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a game at the end of the day. It's um, yes. just what we forget um, is to, to be enjoyed and have fun and, you know, yeah. we'll go out there and uh, try your best. Um, in terms of building team spirit and culture, now a lot of associate countries have a, a different mix of nationalities, um, people mm -hmm. from other parts of the world coming in, um, and that's the case in Iceland. Um, uh, what's, what's the go there in terms of everyone being on the same page because everyone speaks a different language, everyone thinks differently, so how do you ensure that both national teams have that uh, team cohesion in terms of everyone's on the same page and when we go out on the field, you know, we're, we're on the same page and we know what we're doing? Right. I mean, so, um, I mean, I'm the chairman, so I, I kind of have a, a role to play here. Um, as, as part of the leadership, you know, one of the things that I try to emphasize to everybody is that, you don't have to change who you are. You should always be in your own skin. You know, if you come from any country, you should hold that with pride because that's your, that's your, you know, that's your olive tree, as they say. And that's where you come from. And you should hold that with pride. But also be respectful of where you are because, you know, one place is not better than the other. I don't think so. I think we're all human. We all have same wills, wishes, aspirations, and so on and so forth. And if we are respectful and, you know, respect the game and the sport and play it for what it is, you know, all these other things don't really matter. You know, I, I, uh, I, I've, uh, I've tried to emphasize that, you know, we play for Iceland and we kind of bring all ourselves to that you know if it means your country of origin whatever that you've learned there is what you bring here too and use it to build the sport use it to build your team use it to build your teammates because you know it is a team sport it's not just an individual sport you have to pull each other up and you know you have to encourage each other and be positive with your teammates and i think that's how you build a good culture um, and, and, you know, it starts from the top, you know, in Iceland, there is a saying, you know, the fish rots from its head. So if the, if the head is right, then usually the fish is okay. If the, if the head rots, then everything else rots. So, uh, so I try to, you know, live by those standards and I think, uh, our board lives by that standard and, uh, we, we, we strive very hard to, kind of negate all the divisiveness you know i think it's it's not important what is important is we need to respect where everybody is from we need to respect their culture their you know aspects and all that but the rules of conduct there is a constitution that we have built for iceland cricket we play by those rules just like the game of sport of cricket you know there are rules you have to follow those rules there is a code of conduct you need to follow that code of conduct uh, but you should bring your individuality. You should bring your unique character. You should bring your unique style um, to the game. And I think that's what makes it rich, you know. And and we try to emphasize that, you know. We never try to hide behind the fact that, you know, where we are from, you know. I, I still uh, tell very proudly that I'm from India. Nothing wrong in that. I'm an Icelandic citizen, 
but I was born in India and who I am today is made from where I'm from. You cannot ignore those aspects. So you should respect that and cherish that. And the more we do that, I think we, we are better off as humans. Yes, that's that's right. I couldn't agree more. Uh, exactly the same in my case as well. My mother's from Thailand originally. Mm -hmm. so I'm cool. half Thai, half Australian. So I'm, oh, I'm proud wonderful. of that. <laughs> Yeah, you know. So, uh, if I ever had the chance to play for either Australia or Thailand, then I have those options, I suppose. If I, if sure. I was in one of the Thailand is Thailand is an upcoming country. I've seen them play; yes, they're they not that bad. No, they're pretty good. the The women's team has done pretty yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, in in the um, international game, and certainly uh, the game is definitely taken off in in Thailand. But uh, I couldn't agree more with what you said. Um, I suppose different countries in the associate world are different. They have different um, challenges and different uh, ways of going about this sort of, you know, it, making sure everyone's on the same page and having that team cohesion for different cultures and all that. So it, it's good to know that um, everyone feels welcome and inclusive in Iceland, which is fantastic. And that builds a very healthy good environment to, to be in. Um, if it's a happy environment, you want to keep coming back. If it's not a pleasant absolutely. one. Absolutely. Then... Absolutely. I think it's 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 paramount. It is the most important thing. If you don't create an inclusive culture, then you will not have people wanting to be part of it. Uh, so we try very hard to include anybody and everybody into the game of sport. And and you know um, I mean, which is, which I think is, is important. And we're not doing it because we have some ulterior motive because that's how we are. You know, Iceland embraced us and brought us in. We should do the same for anybody else wanting to play the sport. It should be the same way. Yes, yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, so in, in terms of the, the future and the prospects for, you know, the national teams going forward, are you optimistic once you become an associate member? Do you think that maybe in the years to come, maybe further into the future, that Iceland could be participating yeah. in the World Cup? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we we, we have a very bold uh, uh, statement in our Twitter handle, and <laughs> only half of it is joking. I think, uh, you know, in the year 2060, we will want to host the World Cup in Iceland. You know, and, and, and I think uh, that's not too crazy i think it's doable uh, and, uh, and 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 i do believe that we can put up a competitive team uh, we can build a competitive uh, sport and 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 compete with the best in the world i think that's what everybody aspires to do um, i mean obviously there are lots of small steps we need to take to get there but i'm pretty sure if we look in the long arc of history every country that is now a leader came up the same way. You know, uh, I would say the watershed movement for India was winning the World Cup in 1983. I was 10 years old. That kind of inspired me to get very serious about cricket. Um, and I think, you know, from 1983, India was the underdog team, right? And the same was Sri Lanka in 1996. They were the underdog teams and they went on to win the World Cup. Right. In 1992, it was Pakistan, which was an underground, underground, underdog team that went on to win the World Cup. And I do believe that this is why sport is so uh, cherished by humanity, because it gives anybody a chance because everybody has to play by the same rules, you know, especially in a world that is very, you know, I would say unevenly distributed in terms of other things. Sport is by far the only democratizing thing in the world today. You know, anybody anywhere in the world who trains and works hard and given the same rules of the game can compete. And I think that's fun. That's uh, that makes humanity for what it is. And I think we should do more of these things in other other things that we do as well, not just in sports. But again, given that we are talking about cricket. Uh, we think that Iceland has a fair chance. Uh, we have always punched way above our weight in every class. Uh, we are only 370,000 people. 
but uh, per capita, Iceland wins on most things. You know, per capita uh, gold medals, actually, if you think about it, per capita Olympic medals, per capita marathons, uh, football games won, uh, per capita professional players from Iceland playing in English Premier League. <laughs> Uh, so Iceland has a good history in sports. So we want to kind of, you know, grow that history in the sport of cricket as well. You know, now cricket is an Olympic sport. So we will get the support from the Icelandic Olympic Association. And I think, you know, uh, we can uh, make it count. And, 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 and we are very optimistic about uh, our chances of uh, competing and, 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 and winning, you know, I think that's, that's the thing. End of the day, that is, uh, that is what everybody plays for. We want to enjoy the sport, but we also want to win. Yes. I, I couldn't agree more and dare to, uh, dare to dream as they say. And, um, yep. you know, you know, yeah. uh, if you're going to, if you're going to think at all, you know, think big. And yeah. if you're going to, if you're going to do something at all, do something worthwhile. You know, so so that's what that's our motto. We we want to do something worthwhile, and uh, you know, by twenty thirty, I think it's an achievable goal to get Iceland uh, have a competitive team, and uh, and uh, play the sport, grow the sport. Yes, uh, absolutely, and I think everyone uh, will want to wish you all the best, Bala, and the team behind the scenes, and also the national teams in the years to come. Hopefully. Fingers crossed you can obtain associate status and start the journey towards uh, that dream of playing in a World Cup one day. Yeah. But I think yeah. everyone uh, will want um, that to happen for Iceland cricket and, you know, just to be a part of the cricket family officially at yeah. the moment. Thank unofficial. you so much. <laughs> unofficial, but as they say, you know, official, unofficial, these are all, you know, man-made rules. So end of the mm. day, you know, as long as you're playing cricket, we feel we are part of the global cricketing family. Uh, we are big fans of uh, Australian cricket. We are big fans of Indian cricket. We are big fans of Pakistan cricket. We watch all those sports. Uh, we have a lot of fans who come from all these different countries, and we are very thankful for all of them. And uh, if you have not uh, bought uh, any of our merchandise, I think this would be a great way to support us and, uh, you know, buy some of the T-shirts. They are great shirts. Uh, and, uh, you know, the national jerseys are also uh, something that we sell uh, as part of our um, funding campaign. So, so, you know, anything that you can help to support us, we are always eager to take that in because all goes towards building the sport and getting Iceland competitive. Well, I, I might as well buy myself a shirt, <laughs> yeah. help the course, uh, put the money Thanks in the so pot. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that well that's more as well. I, want, I wanted to do that, um, start a collection of cricket shirts from all around the world. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool. So probably Iceland. We'll, 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 we'll send you the national team jersey. We don't sell them, but uh, those are, you know, kind of in limited edition. But uh, we'll send you one uh, as a thank you for having us on your show. Oh, that's very kind of you, Bala. Uh, that's yeah. very kind of you. You're not the first one to offer me a shirt. Estonia Cricket offered me a plain shirt, and I still haven't got yeah, that we'll yet. Do, we'll, we'll send you, and, and, you know, you'll, you'll send me your uh Size details and all that. We'll, we'll, we'll ship one. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind of you, Bala. Uh, definitely. Well, I've got to support Iceland cricket now, do I? Got to wave my flag <laughs> and wear my shirt proudly. Yep. But thank you. That's Absolutely. Very kind. Um, Absolutely. And um, I'll wear it with pride um, and cheer on Iceland. And, and hopefully the ICC will, will give you associate status soon. Hopefully yeah. in the years. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Uh, but, hopefully. Uh, but thank you for sharing the insights on how that process is going in terms of the national teams and uh, embarking on this long journey, which will take some some time. But as yes. they say, you know, patience is important and good things come if you're patient. So hopefully yes. that's the case. You um, have to be patient. You have to make progress every day. And you cannot take the eyes of the final goal. And I think, you know, I think uh, the entire members of our club the country of Iceland, we are all aligned on that. So we'll continue yes. to strive for it. Yes, ab absolutely, definitely. So let's hope that's the case for Iceland cricket. They can uh, be an associate member and, uh, you know, uh, 
play this great game of cricket. So we we all hope that's the case, and and, and fingers crossed that uh, you yeah. can get the status soon. Um, so, but thank you for sharing the insights on the national teams. And I think everyone's learned a lot from listening to you speak so passionately about the national teams and and what you're doing behind the scenes. So you should be proud of the great work. So, so thank you, Bala, thank for you. that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Bala, let's talk about the growth and development of cricket within Iceland in terms of getting cricket into local communities, clubs, schools, grassroots, etc. And Bala, this is one of the challenges that many associate nations have is how they introduce cricket and promote it. That's mm. easier said than done. I'm, I'm sure your team and I'm, I'm sure you sit back in your chair, scratching your head, asking, asking yourselves these important questions in terms of how do you introduce it into the community? Uh, grassroots cricket, establishing local cricket clubs in local communities, competitions, pathway systems, underage comps to uh, unearth the next talent of players and uh, that younger generation who want to play at higher levels. Um, having facilities, that's often a big challenge. Uh, nets, grounds um, for people to access in their areas and, and obviously in Iceland with the weather, uh, it's so unpredictable. Um, so you have to go indoors for for most of the year to try and get some cricket done uh, and making cricket accessible to, to everyone, um, making it easy for everyone to access the game and getting cricket into schools and in their programs um, at a young age for, for girls and boys. Uh, so Bala, what challenges does Iceland cricket have in trying to grow and develop cricket in the Icelandic community? And do you see cricket becoming a mainstream sport in Iceland? Your thoughts on that? Right. Uh, I mean, you know, Iceland's a small place. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we uh, the same challenges of some large countries are not so in Iceland. Uh, most of these things are accessible. Iceland already has excellent sports infrastructure. Um, so, so you know, we are fortunate uh, because of that. Um, and, you know, engaging with local slash schools communities is not that hard uh, because Iceland is small and you know whichever schools we reach out to uh, they're always eager to you know get these programs launched so uh, for us the the bigger challenge is having the support staff who can actually run these programs and execute these programs um, I mean, we are, you know, obviously trying to solve that through our members, uh, but, you know, all of them have day jobs and priorities, families, all other things that comes with it. So this is actually a pretty, uh, you know, hard ask to ask them to commit more uh, other than them just playing, but actually also helping build the sport with others and so on and so forth. Uh, but you know we are up to the challenge we are doing that uh, now um, uh, we are actually getting more people who are not playing cricket interested in building the sport which is also something that we are very actively trying to do because i think you need to have a lot of you need a village to support you to build the sport and so we're trying to get the village engaged and this is a you know we need to be patient about it we need to be able to get uh, others involved and we are trying to do that all the way from the president of iceland to uh the 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 school physical trainer and uh but but i i totally empathize with other countries that are going through these challenges uh, it's not that simple it's a hard problem and I think the best way to solve this problem for any country is, uh, you know, I think you need to go and build a good team that can compete internationally and get some recognition. And that recognition translates to others wanting to be part of that recognition. And it kind of creates a snowball effect. I mean, if you try to, uh, you know, encourage somebody to play the sport, they would not end play the sport. But if you show that their country has performed well in the international level, they say, hmm, I want to go and represent my country and play for Iceland in cricket. That might be a way to encourage kids to, you know, get into the sport. Um, you know, these are all just strategies. Um, I mean, I, I built uh, the startup community, obviously not single-handedly. There were lots of people who helped 
And I say that's why Iceland is a fantastic place because we are very fortunate because when people see that this brings a public good, everybody wants to help. Everybody wants to engage. And I think uh, we're very fortunate that way. And, and, and that's why I'm very confident that we'll get there because Icelanders are doers. You know, we are very um, roll up the sleeve and get stuff done people. You know, we don't uh, sit and deliberate and talk too much because uh, that doesn't help anybody. What we try to do is to get stuff done. And if we are wrong about it, we change course and learn from that experience and move forward. And it's a very startup entrepreneurial mindset. And I think if we apply that to building the sport, we will achieve all those other things that you talked about, which is local grassroots infrastructure, tournaments, so on and so forth. Um, it is, it's all, you know, it all comes down to how we engage with the communities, families, schools, kids, and then get them into the, into the fold of how this rolls up into this uh, notion of a national team and uh, competing at an international level at the highest level and being the best. You know, I think that is, that's always a very good aspiration to, to shoot for. Yes, uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, obviously, it will take time in some of these areas. Absolutely. Everything takes time. You know, we just got we just got to be persistent. We cannot give uh, you cannot give up when you hit a hurdle. You just have to find ways to uh, solve problems and move forward. Yeah. As we say, block and tackle. We just have to block and tackle and move forward and continue to move the goalpost towards where you want to be. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of uh, volunteer numbers, in terms of people who are volunteering to become umpires, scorers, and mm -hmm. coaches, uh, just give us a bit of an update on those fronts there. Are, are people yeah. willing to volunteer in those positions? So, uh, I mean, today uh, we have a lot of people who do volunteer, um, mostly from the clubs, right? People who are part of the clubs, that's part of the requirement we have. And... Uh, you know, we, we get uh, independent members of clubs participating to become umpires, scorers, and uh, other things to run the local tournaments. Um, but, but you know, obviously we could, we could do with more, right? I think, as I said, we need a village to be part of this exercise. And, and that's an ongoing exercise for us to engage and bring more people into the fold. And and we are working towards that. You know, it's uh, it's all it's all never uh, easy. It is hard, but uh, if it was easy, everybody do it. You know, so so we think that you know the hard things are there for us to really make uh, the right people engage with us in doing these things. So we're fortunate there. We we have a lot of people who are very. Uh, committed to building the sport and want to volunteer and, and be part of the game. So, so, so that's, uh, that's an ongoing effort that doesn't stop, you know? Yes. And, and as to the ICC providing coaching clinics and um, um, mm. umpiring courses and coaching courses, uh, have you used the, I mean, no, ICC? so ICC used to have an online ICC umpire training course, but they took all that off. So, you know, I think ICC is doing some disservice by not having all these things accessible by countries that are not part of the associate membership. Yeah. Because the way to grow the sport is to open source it. You know, it's not to close source, it's not to put gates and entryways. You know, the right way to do it is to anybody anywhere in the world who wants to become an umpire can take it online, you know, pass it. I mean, it's just rules, right? If you really think about it. And if somebody can do it well and get through it, then they should be able to, you know, represent themselves and become an official umpire. And will they get selected to represent a game? That's the choice ICC can make. I think ICC having more umpires is a good problem, right? It's not a bad problem, you know. And, 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 and the other thing is coaching, right, you know, Whoever wants to become a coach for the sport of cricket should be allowed to do that. You know, shouldn't be some exclusive group of people doing that. I think in order to make the sport accessible, we should make all these other things easily accessible too. 
Um, and and you know, I wish I wish uh, more people, you know, lobby ICC to do that. Uh, we are going to start lobbying once we are part of the engagement because I think uh, that's how you grow the sport. And it needs to be accessible in other languages because I think one of the other barriers is that, you know, language is a barrier. We need to uh, allow uh, cricketing rules and other things to be accessible in local languages. You know, Icelanders speak Icelandic. So we actually did the translation for a lot of the cricketing words. <laughs> and, and we have a vocabulary and all that uh, accessible for those who play cricket in Iceland. Uh, but obviously, we speak in English in the in the current setup. But most uh, Icelandic words didn't have any correlation to English <laughs> words for cricket, so we had to make them up. But we have done that, so it is a it's a pretty interesting exercise that was conducted by a group of people. Very commendable yes. work, actually. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, that's right. No, I did toil with the idea of probably the MCC to come out with the the law book in different languages around the world because people. I mean, understand. with uh, you know, with artificial intelligence now, mm. I think we can probably solve that problem. Uh, you don't have to manually do them. I think it can be done through machines, and and I think we should take advantage of a lot of those things, and we plan to do that in uh, in our own setting. Yes, but it would be cool to see the law book in a different language than English. It would be pretty cool right. to see that. Right. And as uh, I said, you know, artificial intelligence should be able to do that very quickly, mm, very easily. Very easy, yeah. you know. Definitely. Um, yeah, in, in terms of uh, making the game easy for people to understand, and especially people if they don't speak English as their first language, um, that's something the ICC could think about. Um doing and implementing amongst um, the associate world. In terms of relationship with ICC itself, I always ask this question to all my guests, Bala, in this series. In terms of the relationship, the, the dealings you've had with the ICC, in terms of the, the regional bodies, uh, many of my guests have said the regional bodies are very helpful in terms of ICC Europe, et cetera, you know, all those regional bodies that uh, help out these countries in the associate world. What's your relationship been with, um, uh, you know, ICC Europe or the ICC in, in general? I think, you know, individually, everybody that we have talked to has been quite uh, friendly and helpful. Um, but, you know, that's where it stops, you know. <laughs> it's not, you know, ICC doesn't go above and beyond trying to help any other countries wanting to become member nations. They basically say, you're on your own until you cross a certain criteria threshold and then you know we will be more than happy to engage which i think is kind of silly it's kind of like saying you know when it's raining don't give me an umbrella but when it stops raining you give me an umbrella that just makes mm. no sense you know i think icc can do way better uh in terms of engaging with the uh, people who are aspiring to become members um i don't think it's a lack of resources they have plenty of resources it is just that you know uh, they basically don't care because uh, what what it has what has been in their existence now is uh, far uh, more profitable so they don't uh, really spend time to think about where they need to invest i hope you know that changes you know i hope uh, they they take a more active role in growing the sport growing the game and getting all the other associate and aspiring associate nations to uh, help them. Because I think if we do that, I think uh, the sport will be better off. And I think you'll also get more people engaged as fans. And and our relationship, as I said, you know, is non-existent. You know, it's just a couple of people that we know within ICC who we talk to. Uh, they're obviously helpful, receptive, but as an organization, not really. We don't have any relationship with them. Yes, that's that's quite a good point that you uh, raised there in terms of countries like Iceland and countries that want to come into the ICC. Um, you know, the ICC could do better in terms of being more receptive and more helpful and yeah. support those countries meet the criteria because they're often average for some countries that mm -hmm. are striving to achieve and wanting to break into uh, international cricket. Yeah. Yeah, so 
it's definitely something that the ICC could, <coughs> excuse me, uh, think about in, in terms of what can what can they do better. Do you think that uh, the uh, the uh, full members of the ICC, like Australia, England, India, can do more and co with associates? Absolutely. Or... Why, why why not? You know they are they're quite uh, you know wealthy in terms of resources being allocated to them. But of course, you know, they got to take care of uh, their country's development programs. Uh, but obviously, they all can also help uh, other countries to uh, build up the sport. Because uh, as I said, you know, if you raise the platform that you stand on, you raise yourself and you raise all others on the platform too. So I think uh, the larger cricketing bodies could take a more active role in trying to help the other members countries. If they did that, then, as I said, it will grow the sport, it will grow the fan base, it will also get more countries playing and more talent and opportunities, right? It creates opportunities for players to be able to represent. I mean, we have seen what has happened with IPL. You know, so many, so many kids have gotten tremendous opportunities to to express themselves, to perform and get a platform to to showcase what they can do. I think the same is true for other countries as well. You know, we don't know where the next Sachin Tendulkar is, you know, so we need to be a lot more open about uh, opening that door or uh, uh, Jake, uh, the the sensation from Australia who, who plays for Delhi Capitals now, good, he's yeah. been a revelation. And and I think, you know, these kind of talents is everywhere, right? You don't know until you, you give an opportunity for, for everybody to, get a platform yeah that's that's right mm -hmm. there is some good talent out there in associate cricket just waiting to be yep. unearthed and um yep. people don't really see them because they don't really have that exposure as you mentioned so yes the icc can do a lot of things better um obviously cricket being in the olympics and the t20 world cup this year in the caribbean the u.s being 20 teams looking to grow and promote the sport that way is is a good thing in terms of you know, if it's an Olympic sport, getting more funding and uh, more eyeballs on, on the game because people watch it on TV and say, oh, you know, that looks pretty good. And, oh, and I didn't realise that Iceland had a, a cricket yeah. team and I might as well go and investigate yeah. that. So at least those yeah. are, you know, positive steps that they're uh, undertaking to grow and develop the sport. And, and we could see more teams in the T20 World Cup as the years progress. Um maybe like the FIFA World Cup. So the T20 World Cup could be that um, for the ICC. Um, so in terms of the growth and development of, of the sport in Iceland, are you optimistic that the numbers will continue to, to grow and more people will be interested in the sport in the years to come? I mean, you know, uh, optimism is uh, it's not a strategy. You need to have that to, to build the sport. A strategy is to kind of, you know, obviously reach out. I think the outreach is what uh, we can do and we continue to do, which is to get more people engaged. And if we continue to do that, the numbers will increase. You know, I, I, I'm not, I have no doubts there. So, yeah, I mean, we're we are pretty optimistic about those aspects. Yeah, uh, absolutely. In terms of uh, obviously lack of funding and and that obviously not being a part of the ICC, in terms of providing equipment and you know distributing that to clubs and players, um, is that a bit of a challenge in terms of you know sourcing equipment and issuing that? Yep. To uh, sourcing equipment is difficult, but it's not impossible. Uh, you know, Iceland uh, signed. Uh, Iceland is part of the EFTA countries. They just signed a free trade agreement with India. So a lot of the goods and services related to cricket, we actually get from India. Um, we used to buy from England. Um, obviously the, the cost differential is so dramatic that we buy from India now uh, because it is, it's way cheaper. The quality is, uh, if not better, is as good. And, um, and, and, and all that is, you know, those are all not big issues. We we solve all of them. We live in an island. Everything gets imported here anyway, so it's not a it's not a big challenge for us to solve. But it is a challenge, but it's not impossible. Yeah, uh, 
that's good to hear that um, you've got equipment to share and everyone can uh, access that when, when they do go out and play the game. And in terms of young girls and boys from a young age in schools, um, how are those numbers looking in terms of younger people getting into the game? Right. So, you know, we, we are starting to start coaching in three schools and uh, Icelandic schools are all co-ed. That means it's boys and girls. We train with boys and girls. We engage with boys and girls. So we don't uh, discriminate at the early stage. Early stage, we see more girls playing cricket when we coach. And uh, the numbers are, you know, we still haven't started cataloging and getting them in. You know, we just want to kind of create a fun environment for them to participate. And we want them to be, you know, voluntarily participating rather than us forcing them into the sport. Uh, so it's all in very early stages now. Uh, but, you know, in the next couple of years, we'll have numbers and engagement and all of that. So, so the, as I said, we're just launching women and youth cricket this year. And then, uh, you know, we'll start cataloging it as we as we move forward. Definitely. That's that's fantastic to hear. And and thank you, Bala, for sharing uh, your thoughts on the growth and development of the game in Iceland from what you've been telling me and what people will be listening um, when watching and listening to this episode are, are really encouraging signs. So it's good that the game is growing and pros- prospering. Uh, in Iceland, and and hopefully that can continue for the years to come, and uh, more people want to be interested in the sport and volunteer and give up their time and help the cause. I suppose. Yep, <laughs> we hope so. It was very. Uh, I'm very thankful that you uh, you know reached out to us and happy to uh, talk to your your audience and and uh, get more people interested about cricket and also more importantly Iceland cricket. Um, uh, I'm, I'm coming up on an hour. I need to uh, get out of uh, well, uh, the setting. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's a that's a perfect uh, that's a um, perfect segue for us, uh, Bala, to uh, finish off on our last topic. We've only got one more to go before we wrap up uh, uh, our long chat today, and that's basically about what the future holds for cricket in Iceland. Really, it's very hard to predict the future, as we know. Uh, But if we had to look into the crystal ball and see what uh, Iceland cricket will be like in the years to come. Um, So, Bala, how do you see Iceland cricket and associate cricket going into the future? Your thoughts on that to end our discussion today? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, Iceland, uh, as I said, is a very sports loving country. I think uh, any sport, uh, given enough nourishment, more Icelanders will engage and participate and be part of. Uh, I, I say this because I uh, I have an eight-year-old daughter uh, who plays football and the level of organization, all of that that goes into conducting some of the football tournaments for eight-year-olds is uh, quite amazing. And I think uh, that is the same level of commitment we'll see with cricket as well. And if we did that, I think just like Iceland did in terms of football, I think we will we will compete at the highest level in a very short period of time. And uh, in order to get there, we obviously need to do a lot of foundational development. We are doing that. And I'm very confident that we will achieve a lot of those things. But I don't know how long it will take, but uh, 2030 is kind of like a line in the sand for us. We want to kind of draw that because I took over as a chairman in 2020, and I don't think I'll be chairman moving forward because we have in our constitution that you can only be chairman for four years and then, you know, somebody else has to take over. And um, I think uh, moving forward, uh, you know, I will, I will be engaged with Iceland cricket in one way, shape or form. Uh, but in, in the long run, I think it is important to uh, keep aware of those goals and aspirations and work hard towards getting them day to day. I think if we did that, I think we will be in a better shape and any any country can do this. And and that's that's what keeps me optimistic about what we do. And, and at the end of the day, you know, you need to have a love for the sport. And I do. And I think a lot of others who are part of the game also do that in Iceland. So, so that that makes me very optimistic about the future of Iceland and cricket. Yes, uh, absolutely, and uh, thank you for sharing those uh, crystal ball predictions with us, Bala, about the future of 
Iceland cricket, and hopefully uh, we sh- we shall see those predictions come true in the future. Hopefully, in the years in the years to come. But thank you for sharing that uh, with us, um, Bala. Thank you for joining me uh, today for this Associate Cricket Series episode to, to um, discuss all things Iceland cricket. I've enjoyed it immensely, and I'm, I'm sure everyone listening and watching has as well. Um, Bala, if people want to get in touch with you or Iceland cricket if they want to make some inquiries about all things cricket in Iceland where can people do that well I mean our ex uh, handle Iceland cricket is the best place to reach us I think you can uh, direct message Iceland cricket or you can write to our secretary it is secretary at cricket.is cricket spelled with a k k-r-i-k-k-e-t dot i-s because the Icelandic language does not have the letter c so we only have a, a, a K, um, but uh, X, uh, you know, social media platforms, any of the social media platforms, we are quite active and engaged. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Bala in Iceland, so I'm very easy to find. Um, I'm happy to engage with anybody who is interested to learn more. Uh, they can ping me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll answer them. We are pretty good in engaging with our fans. And, and thank you again for having me. That's my pleasure, Bala. And uh, we will leave links to those in the description of this episode for people to check out if they want to make some inquiries about all things mm-hmm. cricket and ice, man. Uh, before we go, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure we get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Most of the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. Once again, thank you, Bala, for joining me today to discuss all things Iceland cricket. I hope all of you watching or listening to this Associate Cricket Series episode learned a lot about cricket in Iceland from Bala. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.